A hemispherectomy is really a focal resection that involves an entire hemisphere of the brain. That's basically the way to think about it. And the interesting thing is that there are diseases or processes that affect just one hemisphere, just the right or just the left, and tend to leave the other one relatively unscathed. And largely, it is appropriate to do this when all of the seizures come from one side, and usually when the person already has some deficits in the other, in that hemisphere's function. These patients would be expected to recover after a hemispherectomy over a period of time, uh, potentially needing some physical therapy and rehab? Yes, but how much rehab they need even depends on where they started at the beginning and also what caused their, their, uh, their, their problem. So one of the questions that I think confuses people is the difference between a functional and anatomical hemispherectomy. That's a great question, and an anatomical hemispherectomy actually refers to physically removing one hemisphere of the brain, whereas a functional hemispherotomy refers to disconnecting that rather than physically removing it, cutting the neural connections effectively eliminating that hemisphere from being able to influence the brain or body in any way, but preserving the blood supply so that that tissue actually stays there and stays alive. And you hear different versions of, of those terms used together and creates a lot of confusion, but fundamentally that's the difference. And you know, the reason that's important is because the two operations are quite different in how they're carried out. And we believe certainly have different complications potentially afterwards. What, what do you do now? We do a functional hemispherotomy on essentially all of our patients. Sometimes a slightly individualized variation is required, but basically the disconnection operation rather than the removal operation. Most patients who are appropriate for hemispherectomy or functional hemispherotomy will have a few particular diagnoses, uh, a stroke affecting one side of the brain. You know, one thing I should mention at the outset is really you're looking for patients with epilepsy that have a problem with one side of the brain and you're pretty sure the other side of the brain is normal um, because then you can treat it and not leave seizure generating tissue behind. So a stroke affecting one side of the brain, particularly that has injured parts of the brain that cause movement. Um, so that the patient after surgery may not have much difference in their function, if any. Uh, congenital conditions, there's a condition called hemimegalencephaly mm -hmm. where sort of half the brain is malformed and enlarged, the, the mega means it's large. Uh, there are certain other conditions, uh, kind of inflammatory conditions, one called Rasmussen's encephalitis. And some patients that have a a fairly large uh, malformation of the brain, like the uh, hemimegalencephaly, but there can be large malformations of cortical development. There are various types um, that can be relevant. And finally, patients that have certain known uh, kind of syndromic conditions like um, Sturge-Weber syndrome, where there's a fairly large malformation uh, that involves blood vessels in various parts of the brain, but again, tends to affect one side of the brain.